As you all know, Fast Track MicroStation V8i. Um, if you guys don't have MicroStation your machine, you just have to contact the uh, help desk. Probably takes a couple days, maybe a week, depending on how busy they are. Uh, the agenda of the class is just the you know, introduction, purpose of MicroStation, objectives, class outline, which could, you know, change a little bit. A um, little information on, on myself. Uh, I've been doing CAD design for 12 and a half years. Uh, civil roadway, structural design, mainly structural. Not, uh, electrical is back and forth. Um, AD, ADDA, certified mechanical drafter, certified te technical CAD associate, senior technical CAD associate. Now it's an AutoCAD um, version J, which is the same thing as version 7 for MicroStation, V8, XM, V8i. Um, my sister was supposed to be here, but he moved to Newark, so Diego. <laughs> he was going to help me out. Like, you guys stuck with it all. Yeah, he bailed on me. I just called him. <laughs> um, he has experience in AutoCAD, but um, he wants to get more, just like everybody, he wants to get a little bit more on uh, MicroStation since that's what we pretty much use here. Um, this purpose is to acquire basic knowledge of my microstation. It's not the full-fledged, you know, course. It's it's like an eight-hour whole week course, and I don't have the textbooks or the materials to do it. Bentley does, but I'm not paying for that. <laughs> it's way too much. Um, it's just like you know, this is the second course. Uh, the first one was just a ba um, fairly basic, just to get people familiar with it. Uh, we're doing the second class because a lot of people were asking about raster imaging. And since I'm in project integration, we do a lot of drawings that we have to incorporate uh, satellite images or helicopter images to superimpose any type of new uh, equipment that are going to be on the uh, on the substation, just to see if it's if there's room there, how it's going to look, you know, more or less. Um, they're trying to do this for you know anybody that has micro stations that can benefit from this, and obviously new hires too if they want to get on the learning curve. Um, Pretty much, you know, the con is, like I said, it's for mostly conceptual design, civil, uh, electrical work. Um, you'll be able to learn how to obviously, you know, create a new drawing, import, export um, drawings, images, references, stuff like that. Uh, if there's any questions that's outside you guys want, you're just curious about, just, just throw it out there. No, no big deal. CAD engineering design, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what is CAD? You know, computer-aided design and drafting. CAD is uh, it's used for uh, computer systems to create, modify, analyze, and just optimize any type of design. Uh, CAD designers are responsible for creating detailed drawings and renderings for proposals, project deadlines, and work very close with engin um, design engineers just to create details for any client, really, you know, PCNG, DOT, Turnpike, Parkway. Um, you know, even mechanical, civil, electrical, architectural. Um, many architectural, they use, a, they use a, a lot of them use AutoCAD, but MicroStation, it's pretty well diverse. You can use anything. Every company has their own standards, you know. So, DJNs. DJNs and D DWGs. Um, DJN is pretty much the same as a DWG. The only difference is a DJN is a drawing for MicroStation, dot DJN extension. Uh, DWG is for it's an AutoCAD extension. Uh, AutoCAD, you know, it can be worked, it can be open, and converted into MicroStation. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about it. The only th thing you have to worry about if you're doing a design drawing, an actual design that's going on for you know for a bid or contract drawing, if you start in it in AutoCAD, you might want to finish it in AutoCAD because when you do a conversion from a full let's say 1,200 sheet <laughs> project from AutoCAD MicroStation. It's not always a quick, easy convert. There's things that are going to happen. Um, fonts could be out of whack, weights, because a lot of times AutoCAD is determines your weight by color. So your red it could be a weight five. MicroStation, it won't it won't be that way. So it's not it's not always easy quick convert unless it's just a simple schematic. That's 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 no big. You don't have to worry about it, no big deal. That's fine. So just always take that into account. You just want to keep one you know whatever format in that format. Yes. I don't want to put you off course. Here. Do most of the consultants use AutoCAD or MicroStation? Um, it, it all depends. I mean, the, uh, the DOT uses a MicroStation. The Turnpike, Parkway, they actually use a little bit of both. They use MicroStation and AutoCAD. Depending on what project they're doing, they might want an AutoCAD. 
uh, like the whole six and nine winding on the turnpike. Um, I worked on that. That was all microstation. So it all depends what the client is actually using. A lot of the counties in Jersey use AutoCAD. A lot of the smaller counties, like Cape May County, um, usually want their deliverables in AutoCAD. So, but their stuff is like, you know, pro easy, you know, small uh, bridge inspections. You're doing the microstage converter, AutoCAD, you know, your final product. So it all depends on the client, what they actually, what they, well, usually. The, yeah, like if like if it's a simple drawing, like oh, just just draw this, not the scale, or draw this to scale, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You can convert. It. If there's no special fonts, or font resources, or weights, or anything like that, you can convert it. It's fine. But if you if they get down to the nitty gritty, like this is the actual design project went out for bid, and this is going to be built, constructed, and they want to convert it, that's a whole other issue because there's a lot of um, a lot of things that come into play. You you got your fonts, your resources, everything. So there's a lot of stuff. There's a, a giant list of things you got to go through, and it's a pain in the butt for lack of, you know, for lack of a better term, it's a pain in the ass. So it's it's you, what you want to do that you want to double check with your client or whoever you work with. Is this do you want is, is this an AutoCAD or just a MicroStation drawing? Because if it's an AutoCAD, you do it in MicroStation, but there's problems down the line that, as far as conversion. Um. We're going through this, you know, how to create a new drawing. So obviously, this is the first step if you don't have a drawing already. Come on. Okay. Uh, Microsoft, we have things like uh, your basic setup, how to set up function keys, um, you know, button assignments, grid locks, double monitor windows. Like if you have dual monitors, you can set it up so you have two window applications that show up because MicroStation has a lot of, a lot of dollar boxes. So when you work at MicroStation, on a double monitor is 100% stress-free. <laughs> it's easier that way. Try to work on a laptop, you can do it, but you get, it gets crowded very quickly. But there's a, there's a setting to set up a double monitor, set up a double monitor for it. There's a lot of different terms, um, terminology for shortcuts and navigational tools. Um, always remember when it comes to CAD, no matter what software you're in, consistency is the main key. Uh, drafting and CAD standards are always set up and they've been in place for years. So every company, even though they might have their own special standards, there's a generic set CAD standard that has, that's the same across the board. So you pretty much have to incorporate your CAD standards with whatever standards that the company that you're working for or your client that you're working for. Come on. I obviously you know that uh, Bentley MicroStation VI is what's being used in PC and G. Uh, they, like the Norco office, they use XM as well. They use both both versions. Uh, your basic layout for MicroStation, as soon as you get in, should look something like this. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of small, but as soon as you get in MicroStation, you, all your tools and icons are going to be on the left-hand side. Uh, you'll be able to drag them, dock them, customize it, you know, any way you want. Um, it's a basic lesson plan. Like I said, it could change. We could bounce around. Obviously, today is just learning how to set up your file, get into it, uh, just to get the ball rolling. If you don't have an actual file, like a, a drawing file, you have to work. At least you know how to set up, create your first file, and how to set things up. So like almost, it's, they call it a seed file. But pretty much, you get your file, you set up the way you want it, and that's you're gonna be your, your seed to grow the rest of your plans, the rest of the project. So you don't have to, you're not gonna have to worry about each. File, it's going to be a little bit different as far as settings. You start, set everything up perfect the way you want it in the first file. Just copy, save as, copy, save as, you know. Um, the hand, for the second class, which is next Thursday, you know, with the hands on exercise, but I, I'm going to go through it here. And obviously, um, you guys go, you know, can do it on, uh, if you have your laptop, you can pick um, any tougher raster image, anything you have in your machine, just to kind of mess with it. Um, I'm just going to show you some examples, some drawings, some uh, drawings that I did. Uh, obviously, uh, third, third class, I'm going to talk about level layout, creation, construction elements. You know, the more um, nitpicky type stuff that actually will help out, especially construction elements. If you're drawing, if you're drawing a, I don't know, bearing detail for something, but you want you, you want you have a bunch of reference lines. You don't want to you don't want to erase them, but you don't want to print out. Well, you can put them on a construction element level. So that they don't, that you can shut down on and off, so they won't print out. But if you got to go back to the future, but you don't want to reinvent the wheel, you have your, your starting points that you you use to create that detail. 
This is the thing. I put this together because a lot of people get confused <laughs> with the buttons. MicroStation is, uh, you know, legendary for the mouse. And the mouse is what you'll be using most of the time. Your left button here is called your data point button. Your right button is, re is just reset. That's, that means if you're in a command, you hit reset once, twice, or like me, a thousand times, because I'm just, I have it, a twitch, I guess. All it does is get you out of the command. It resets you, it resets you. The center button it has two terms. It's called a tentative button or your snap button. Pretty much, it is, it, what that does is pretty much, if you're, uh, if you've got a, an intersection, you want to snap the intersection, it, it does what it says, it just snaps to that point. Um, when soon as you click, it just snaps to whatever point. In micro stages, there's a bunch of different snaps. You get your center snap, nearest uh, intersection snap. That's pretty, that's what you use to snap. There's also a, a, a command micro station that will do it automatically for you. It all depends on your, your preference. If you want micro stations to pick your points automatically, they, you could go to have an intersection, but you want to snap to the end of that line. Well, depending where your cursor is, it'll highlight the spots for you. You just gotta be careful with that because if you're too close to one end versus the other, it might snap to the wrong area. Also, um, I don't know how many copies I have, but on the table here, there's a MicroStation key in uh, printout that I did. Obviously, there's a ton more, but these are just quick shortcuts uh, you're using the key uh, in the key in command in MicroStation that that will help out, you know, to your, you set up your active angles, your 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 X Y C delta stuff like that, you know. And uh, my station open. Yes, I do. Okay. This particular drawing right here is one I just finished uh, about a week, two weeks ago. This is for Foundry Street substation. Um, as you see, we have the. I think this is a Google Earth image. If I remember, yeah, Google Earth image, which probably the best. We can, obviously because we pay four hundred dollars for Google Earth, <laughs> but this is a Google Earth image. All they pretty much wanted to do was, you know, put the breakers, put the disconnects, and just to see how the, if the new equipment was going to fit into this real estate that we have here, and determine okay, at this certain size, this certain you know, I think this is a sixty-nine kV. If I remember, yeah, sixty-nine kV sketch. They just want to see if it all if it all fits. A lot of times you bring your image. Um, but they want it to scale, an actual scale. Well, if you go to Google Earth, if you have Google Earth, you locate your, your substation. If you measure, uh, let's say, I don't know, uh, if there's a um, control house, you measure that control house, they'll give you the exact distance at the control house because it's an actual real, re real measurement in Google Earth. Once you bring that, once you save that image, reference that image into your drawing, you'll be able to scale that proportion by three points to that exact dimension. So when you start drawing or placing these elements in, in here, it's going to be more realistic. The best way of doing it, I'll show you right now. This is a copy of the file, so I don't have to worry about screwing it up. <laughs> we use um, <coughs> MicroStation Raster Manager to attach any and all images. You can attach PDFs as well, but it's always better to attach a TIFF or JPEG. It's kind of easy to work with, but you can do PDFs if that's, if that's what you want. Um, let me close out this. All right. What I'm going to do is just, I'm going to show you just how to get in, create a in, and how to reference in that image. So once you get in the micro station, where your icon is, I was you get this, or I'll probably just go to your C drive. All you gotta do is click right here. It says new file, the little white paper. You just print it in there. You just give it whatever uh, name. I'll say junk. Hit save. And it puts it wherever you want. It puts it where you wherever you tell it to tell it to go. Just highlight the file. You can double click on it or you just highlight it and hit open. This is what you're going to see. So you create a brand new file. Usually, view one, you want to see that. View two, you know, you really don't want to see that. You can shut off the views. Um, right now, I see mine's pretty busy. I have all my stuff customized. A lot of times when you work in MicroStation, if you have a dual monitor, 
You want view one and view five. Those are the, the two ones you want to deal with. If you just got a single monitor, just view one. Yeah, because in Microsoft you have eight view windows. So we usually deal with view one on one screen, view five. But if you're dealing with like a three-dimensional drawing or anything else, you can open up multiples. But say the default is you view one and view five as your, your, your best working uh, windows. For this one, I'm, I I, um, I changed my preferences to put one window because I'll be, I would say just get the laptop. So I'm going to shut this view off. In MicroStation, when you get in, you should see down here at the bottoms. You see one through eight, and these are all your view windows. If you click on them, it just opens up a ton of windows. And you can work in either one of them, that's fine. But usually, you just, all you really need is two if you just work on basic, you know, basic um, drawing. You see here we got this lovely grid. Uh, you really don't need that. That's it's, it's hardly used at all. It just it, it turns it on automatically for you. It depends if you're doing like any type of a grid snap, grid, a project that you need like grid snap or something. But you really don't need that. There's a shortcut to shut that off. But what I want to show you, if you go to your top here, uh, I think I lost my place. If you go under utilities, there's a thing here called keying, which is like AutoCAD's well, keying, command, like your command bar, pretty much. If you click on that. Mine's already down here, but it'll show up like this. This, um, oh, I closed it. The MicroStation keyins is what you're using here. So if I wanted to, I wanted my active angle to say to be 90. Um, if you guys, when after class, if you guys, you guys could grab these guys here, and you, make, you can take it with you. Um, one of them is for active angle. If I hit AA equals, I don't know, uh, 90. I make my active angle 90 degrees. So if I'm placing, where is it? Okay. If I'm gonna, if I'm placing any type of text, automatically it's gonna come in 90 degrees, right here. That's just enough. That's just one way. I mean, as soon as you open up a dollar box, it'll say active angle. And you can just highlight it and change it. And that's just a simple key in. And that's the old school key in, key in that you use from V7 onto any version of MicroStation. It's just the same. So if you didn't set the, you said that default um, setting for, for the angle? For, for, for each of these keys? Oh, yeah, that's. MicroStation already has those embedded inside of it, so you don't have to create anything. As soon as you start typing something and recognize it, it'll, it'll, it'll semi highlight it for you. So if I type in the word um, file, or even the letter F, you see how it highlights? But if I type in file, it picks up anything that has that letter inside of it. How come when I open up key in, like four boxes? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, usually that'll, that'll pop up. Um, you see them, you have the little magnifying glass on the top right corner of that key in box? Like it looks like a keyboard with a magnifying glass with an arrow. Top right? Yeah. Like this right here? No. What does your show? Just the key in box? And does it show in? Just the key the box with a drop down and then those four boxes and then, then, then big space underneath. And there's no arrow? There's no, like, uh, there's no arrow next to it? No magnifying glass? Do you have VLI or V8? 8I. 8I? Yeah. Either way, I mean, right now, is, is it floating? it's just floating in the, middle, in the middle of your screen like this, right? You could dock this, and it'll get rid of it. You could take this and just put it anywhere, and it'll get rid of it. Because all, all that does, these four boxes, is step one, two, three, and four, depending on what you're keying in. If I type in file, I say, okay, um... Oh, I typed in label or something. I typed in something. Yeah, I typed in. If you start typing anything in, it'll start picking up the phrases. It'll say, okay, this command, next comes this command, next comes that, that command. But usually I just, I only use that for the shortcuts, you know, because it gets really complicated once you get into it, because this is just not even half of them. There's got to be like a thousand, but a lot of times they're they're hardly used. The ones that are used are these guys, the, the, the majority of them. Um, 
this grid right here, if you actually if you have your key in, come on, if you click on your key in so you see it blinking, I don't know if you can see it there, if you hit control B, once you have, when you, if you click inside your key and hit control B, you get this view attributes box. This controls pretty much just just a view, just a view of your your, your viewport here. Um, the settings. You want to shut this grid? You just hit control control B. Anything that's highlighted in orange is what's active. I mean, what's sh being shown in your your viewport. You see, we have grid is turned on. Click that, it just shuts it off. Any type of setting. A lot of times you want to keep line styles, line weights. You want to keep that. Hmm? Yeah, just if you turn it on, just click on it. Anything else that's default, like line weights, line styles, you want to keep those checked on. But default it turns on anyway. But you want to keep it checked on because if you're drawing something, everything's going to come out like a weight zero. But you want to, some things you might be like weight one, weight five, you want to see the difference. Let's say this is the way you want the file, you're good to go, you're happy with it. All you got to do now, if this is your starting point, your starting point, and you love the way the file looks, this is what you're going to use for all your other new files. Once you're done, if you go to File, and you hit where it says Compress, there's a little arrow on the right-hand side. Hit Compress, Design, and Save Settings. That means that once you get out of the binary station completely, go back in, it's not going to convert back to like a brand new you know, it's not going to go back to what it was when you first got into it. It's going to save everything you did. Even if I even I if I decided to draw something like this, and it says way it's way out here in space, but I wanted to save. Let's say I want to save this view like this. If I just go to compress design, or you can hit the save settings. Compress design just compresses everything. Uh, if you hit save settings, and I get on the micro station. You got completely or just file closed, and I go back in. It saves it the last, how how I left it. If you didn't do that, if you if it was actually saved out here, it'll go back to that view. A lot of times, they say you're working on a file, you zoom in on the specific area on the substation. You want to say you want John. Hey John, open up this file, and go to this area on this this the this, this switcher station. Instead of him having to go in and search exactly the area you want, you can zoom in on that area on your screen, hit go to File, Save Settings. So when he opens up the file, he'll see exactly what you just saw on that same exact area. Instead of having to go search with God's screen earth and say, where the heck is it, you know? Can you set it up for auto-save? Yeah, well, Stage automatically saves your, your, your file anyway. All this does is save your, it saves your, your settings, your personal settings. So when you're working at MicroStation, every every few I think every few minutes, every minute, uh, it, it saves it saves a file. A lot of people, you know, if you go to AutoCAD, you're sometimes people have to have you go to file, hit save. You could do that, but it's not. It's you really don't have to. It's, it saves automatically. All right, so now we got a file. We want to bring in. A, we want to bring in an image. Uh, and I did think I closed that folder. Nice. Just bear with me one second. I just have to find that image. Um, so it was found your sheet was the one we we're looking at. Okay. Now you want to bring in your image. If you go to file, you go all the way down to where it says raster images. Not references. References if if you want to reference another file, another one cat file into another cat file. I'll show you how to do that in, in, uh, as soon as I show you how to do the raster images. If you go to file, hit raster manager. You get this lovely box with all these commands. This is just how to manipulate, rotate, scale, mirror, all the stuff you can do with a raster image. If you go to file and attach, you get a little this little box opens up. I mean this little. Uh, Extension opens up. You just hit raster. These other guys, WMS, form image server, you don't have to worry about that. All you have to worry about is go to attach and raster. Then you just locate um, wherever your image is located in that. 
Which I want to use Founder for you. That was a good one. Um, this is JPEG on Founder Street. Once you click on that, here's the thing. If you double click, it should just throw it out in space. Highlight the file, and it's right here under the preview. If you don't have preview on, just just, just check the box that says raster preview. You'll see the preview of your image. Make sure you have the right one. Before you hit open, right underneath it says place interactively. If you click that, hit open, it'll let you put it wherever you want to put it. Instead of it throwing it out in, out in, the, out in the space and then you got to locate it. You get this box. It says place interactively, yes. It's just confirming that you want to do that. Hit attach. So I can put, right now I have these crosshairs. It's telling me right here, if you look at the, I don't know if you can see it, but the bottom left hand corner, enter origin of foundistry.jpg. Pretty much you hit your, da your data point, which is your left click, a first point. Um, you, you, don't, you don't have to hold on any of the buttons when you're dragging. You just drag it across the screen and say your second point. Just left click, it brings it in. Simple as that. Now here's here here's the part here's the here's the uh, I won't say tricky part but here's where you want to make sure it's your this image is the actual scale when you're bringing in a TIFF JPEG anything like that it's never 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 going to be a hundred percent to scale it might be up to like point zero one or something you know if you got a building that's twenty five by thirty five and you actually scale the one you scale twenty five depending on where you put your cursor it could be 24.9, 24.8, you know, off by it here. Because images are like that. But let's say, um, let's just do this. Let me just see. This one. Oh, this is another thing. I think it's in meters. Uh, where settings? What the heck is it? Just lost it. Uh, yeah, see, this is a thing. When you create a new file, for some reason, it puts it in meters. So obviously, you want to be in feet and inches or server feet and inches. If you go to your settings and you go down to where it says design file under settings, you click that, you get design file settings. Always be sure if you go all the way down to that box, it says working units. Be sure that it says it's set the feet and inches, not meter, meters and millimeters. So you click that and hit uh, feet, it automatically changes the inches. Uh, the accuracy, usually I put a sixteenth, it's good enough. You don't want to get, you know, you only get like 30 seconds of an inch. If you go feet and inches, the label, it says FT an inch. You can change that to just a tick mark, you know. This is just the read. This is just the the, the working and how how it's going to read out to you. So you keep it at FT and IN, or you just put the actual foot in, foot symbol and inch symbol. Once you hit OK, and let's say, and I decide to measure it, now my readout it's it's it comes out at the fractions. So let's say. Hold on, um, There we go. There we go. All right. I forgot. I forgot to mention this. Once you're in your working, when you're in your working units, the format. If it says MU, just change it to MUSU, because your colon is say five colon six. That just says five foot six inches. So this is a little stuff you have to worry about if you're creating a brand new file. If you have a file that's already been created, you don't have to worry about it. But just so you guys know, just for future reference, say, hey, I need to create a new file. This is what I gotta look for. All right, so let's say this building right here, this side is 25 feet. So what I'll do is I'll make this, I'll make a, I'll put a line, I'll create a line, five, the weight, five, color, yellow, something that can stand out. These are just going to be my reference lines when I scale this drawing up. If you do your line command, which this is what you're going to see when you create a new file. All your commands are right here. And, you know, on a Q, W, E, R, there's all the commands. Your basic line command, if you hover over that command, I'll tell you what it is. Like right here, this is place line. If I left click on the screen, I'm just going to go way out here. It's a pretty thick line, but you know, just something that's going to stand out at you so you, you can see you can see where the line is once you explode this image. So this is your first point. 
if you go to your copy command, which is right here, number three, you hold that down. It'll say copy, move, scale. It'll say, it'll say all the commands that are in that little tool palette. And then once you get ready to customize it, if you want, you can go all the way to the bottom. So it's just say open as toolbox. And it'll just put it in the middle of the screen. And you can, you can dock it wherever you want to dock it. That's a, that's a personal preference. Um, once you decide to copy this line, just copy it straight across, or draw a new line. But I'll usually I'll copy straight across so those both both those lines are the same height, um, same length. Sorry, copy to more or less where you think the edge of that building is. So let's say you want to make this um, what do I say, 25 feet. The same one where has your copy. If you hold that down, and there's it says move parallel. Those two those two vertical lines. Right here, this is actually pretty good. If you check, which is distance, just type in your distance. Highlight that and type in 25 feet or whatever. Hit enter. It says 25 colon zero, 25 feet, zero inches. Once you click that, click on the line that you want to offset, which is your first line. You just hover over it, left click, and tell it, you know, depending on side, what side your mouse is on, your cursor is on, that's where it's going to throw to the line. So I'm going to the right. Ah, see, I mean, this is a mistake I just did. This is something you gotta work, you gotta look for. You see, it just moved it. I didn't copy it. Make sure it says keep original checked on. If you say keep original, it'll just make a copy. It won't physically move the line. So, any command you get, you're gonna get this little box that comes up with all your properties and settings for that particular command. We put our 25 feet dimension. Keep originals on so we could copy it, not move it. So once I left click. Go to the right side. Where's my line? It's all the way out here. This is my 25 feet. Obviously, you see it's a huge difference. Now here comes the point of actually taking this drawing, scaling up proportionally. Because if you scale it up, it's not proportional. You're going to get something that's warped. So all you got to do, your raster manager box where you have your image. If you actually right click on that, you get a bunch of commands. Uh, we want to scale it, so you can move, scale, rotate, warp. There's a lot of things you can do with this. If you go to scale, like I said, you get these little boxes for every command. Right now, I'll set the x, y, x and y scale is one. You can type it in whatever scale you want, but to get to an actual scale, excuse me, the method. If you change that to three points, right here, the box is proportional. Once you do that. Use your tentative button, which is your your snap button, your middle button. Snap there. You see how I highlighted that line and put the crosshairs right there? You snap there, left click. You snap to the other end of this um, this house, but this, that's, this is the area you want to stretch. Use your tentative button, left click there um, again. So once you see now, it, it's, it's, grabbed the, it's grabbed the image by those two points, and it's going to stretch it. So you want to stretch all the way out to this new area. Hit your, your your snap button, left click. Now you see it stretches all the way from this line to this line. That's the 25 feet. So now if I actually measure it, if you use the measure tool, you know, obviously depending on where you click in the image, 25 foot three. You know it's it's off a little bit, but it's 25 feet. Now it's more to scale. So when you start placing your new transformers, your breakers, your disconnects, you get a better realistic idea of how it's going to look out in the field, if it's going to fit in that area. Any questions? All right, does everybody understand as far as like scaling? OK, now, a lot of time, not, not a lot of times, but there are cases that if you bring in an image, you go overlay one image on top of another. Uh, let's say someone has this this image here, but they want to bring in another image, but they want to be trans a little transparent, a little like uh, say dithered. Well, there's a command in MicroStation that you could take one image and you could make it a little bit more transparent, kind of fade in the background. Um, you really don't need to, you don't need to do that, but I'll show you how to do it anyway, because you might be in a certain area that um, if you got a TIFF image. But the background of another, they want the, they want two images. They want your, the, the image in the foreground to be dark, the image in the background to be a little bit dither, lighter, so it doesn't you know bleed. 
which uh, if I bring if I go file, oh, it's already open. Master Manager attach. Yeah, I got a TIFF right here. I'll use this one. TIFF, my place interactive is on. You can hit open or just double click on it. Always check that, make sure it says yes. Attach. And I'm just going to bring it in here. When you zoom in, it gets, it gets clear. Now, so for some people, this is kind of like, you know, messes with the eyes a little bit. You can invert this image, so you can make everything black and line and the, the, the line work um, white. If you click on either one of those images, usually this works on a TIFF image. You click on this TIFF, these little guys on here, which is invert, you click that, it'll invert them. That'll look a lot better. Makes it easier to see. And usually it'll work better for an actual aerial, aerial image, but either or you can, it'll work on this image as well. If you right click on this and hit which says transparency, you can mess with the transparency, you know, whatever percentage, hit OK. You see what I did? It made it, it made it, it made it, it made it a little bit more transparent. That's a, the only thing that's weird about V8i, which I don't know why they did it. The old one verse, I think it was uh, V8. If you mess with the transparent bar, if whatever percentage you go up, you'll see it. You see the difference on your screen. You see it going dark or lighter. This one, you have to hit OK in order to see the difference. That's the only thing I don't like about it. They then keep the good, the good command when they go up to the next version. But that's something you got to play with. You know, whatever percentage, how dark, how light you want. It. Usually that works better on an actual arrow image because you can see it take effect a little, little, uh, little better. Oh, this and this will be the same way. You can, you know, this one is this is a perfect example right here. You have a 14 foot dimension. You know, you bring in something that you you already know has an actual dimension. You do the same thing. You can put a line there. You can copy the line across. Oops, sorry. Yeah, man. Copy the line across, and do the same thing. Just use your offset command. Offset that 14 feet, and then you do the same thing. You just right click scale by three points. So now when you measure that 40 foot dimension, it's going to be either dead on or pretty damn close. That's why if you get work for somebody as an image, um, whether it's a TIFF or a JPEG, if they have an actual dimension there, that's your your dimension you use to scale it by three points to make it read that actual dimension. If it's 40 feet, you want it to read 40 feet or pretty or pretty close. If not, use a Google Earth that you can measure you know, certain certain areas. And I'll just close the box, I don't know why. Funny thing is, I was going to talk about this in the second class, I'll talk about it now. <laughs> but no big deal, because I, I have something else I want to incorporate in here as well. And, okay, where is, um, because, you know, when you're creating a new drawing, like we just did, it doesn't take that long to do. So then, figure just let me get into the nitty gritty stuff. Um, oh, here's a perfect drawing I just did here. Um, I just I just finished this today. Hardware assembly drawing. These these boxes up here, these are all from Excel spreadsheet. When they print out, you can't tell the difference from Excel or at your MicroStation. If you double click on it, it opens up the Excel file. Now, here's the tricky part. <laughs> if one person is working on Excel and you know they're going to constantly update it, update it, update it, and you have to see the updates on your screen, what they'll do, or what you can do, if they tell you where, if they get send you a link, say, look, my Excel spreadsheet is here. We, can you put this table onto the drawing? Well, you can link it on here. So when they update any type of the drawing, as long as they hit, as long as they hit save, all you have to do is go into the drawing and you'll see the, your diff, your um, your updates take effect. The only problem with that is if it's linked and they move that Excel to a subfolder or rename it, you lose your whole link. You'll still see it, but you won't see any updates. So a lot of times, you can embed it. This right now is embedded. Embedded and linked, they look exactly the same in MicroStation. If you embed it, that Excel spreadsheet is part of the file. So whatever updates you do, it's under your control. So like, let's say for instance, uh, 
And these are both from the same spreadsheet. I just I brought them in differently. Do you do Word docs, documents too, or is it just Excel? Um, usually Excel. You can bring in Word documents as well, but usually it works better with Excel. Um, if I double click here, if you just hover over it, I don't know if you see on the, on the monitor, on the screen up there, it actually highlights the exterior of this, uh, this, <clears throat> this, this box. If you double click on that, it brings it in and highlights the box. So you don't have to guess, oh wait, I just clicked on it, which one did it bring in? It has to highlight the box that, that's, that you clicked on. How do you import that into your... Oh, yeah, I'm about to show you that right now. Okay. Um... Right now, if you want to import it, what I would usually do, you, all you do is highlight the area that you want. And just just to be on the safe side, if you know that if, you, if there's a possibility that I might add extra row, extra rows, you always highlight just a couple of other a couple more spaces. So if they, add, if they decide to bring in extra rows, once they update it, you'll see the extra row, the, the extra rows in your file. It'll, it'll, it'll print out fine. It's a microstation. You'll see the extra white space. But obviously, it prints on a white paper. You're not going to see nothing. So let's say you want to bring this in. All you do is highlight it. You know, to just you know, copy. Just control C or just hit copy. Keep it open. Don't close it, though. Just collapse it down. And microstation, here it is. You go to edit. Paste special. You don't go to paste. Paste special is, what is the one you want to go to. This is what controls any linkage with the uh, with Excel. And here's and, and here's the two. There's a lot of stuff on here, but the main ones are in embedded Microsoft Excel since 2003, but it'll work for any Excel from 2003 and up. Embedded MicroStation Excel or linked. They both work the same. Only like I said, linked is it'll update automatically. Embedded is part of your file. So just to show you, if you hit um, embed it, you can double click or hit paste. Click there, just drag it across your screen. Like I said, you don't have to hold it down, the mouse down, just bring it out. That's it. Now when you bring it in, obviously you know, if you bring it too big, you can, you can just scale that down. Um, you can use your regular micro, micro station scale to actually scale this table down to, so the text is not overpowering the rest of your drawing. You know. If you go to your number three here, which is your just your basics, hold that down, you go down to scale, and you can do two things. You can actually just, let's say point one. Uh, if I go down point five, click on it, it brings it down. Come on. Or you do the same thing, you just scale proportion by three points. This is just a visual thing because obviously it's an Excel file. Now you see this right? Every one of these Excel files we bring in, you hover over it, it gives you a little faded um, highlighted line around it. If you actually click on it, it'll turn yellow or whatever your highlight color is. It could be purple, blue, whatever. And we usually we give it yellow. If you're going to scale this down, say, oh, this takes, I brought it in too big, I want to make it smaller. Usually a lot of times you have to, it's a visual thing, you just have to eye it up. If you click your scale command, same thing. If it, same thing. If it's an actual um, part, of, an actual um, line work, you can just snap to the end of that box. Left click, snap to the other side, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's bringing it, it's bring, it's bringing it up and down. This is a white. It's, it's a white line, so it's kind of hard to see in the white background. You can see it. Oh. You can bring it in. So right there, you could, and you could pair that with your actual physical text that you have on there. Because you, you obviously you don't want you want it to look you want it to look good. You don't want it to be too overpowering. And this actually works. You use regular move command. You move it all over. And that's how you actually bring it in. If you hit paste special, hit link. It's the same procedure. There's nothing different. It's just linking instead of embedding into your file. Now, now check this out here. Let me get rid of that. Look at these two boxes. You see the difference? One's lighter than the other. This one's darker, and it looks. It actually has like um, hatching. That's telling me my cell file is open. That file is open. If I go to Excel file, which it is open, come on, and I hit save or just close it. 
that's not even from, I didn't change anything, so I don't even have to change that. It goes back to white. So if you ever see a dither like that with hatching, it lets you know that the file is still open. But if you make changes to the file, you won't see it unless you hit save and then close the file. That's when you see your quantity change or any type of text or anything like that. So always remember if you're gonna link if you're gonna link in Excel to here, just make sure whoever is working on Excel file doesn't move it, doesn't rename it. But if they, if they say, look, this is all we're gonna have, um, if there's any updates, I'll give you a markup. If you can update the Excel for me, you can embed it. Long as you can embed it because it's part of the file. Can you say that one more time? How you embed it? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, this one. Okay, here's your here's your <coughs> Excel file. I'll highlight both of them. You just you pretty much just highlight the air, the areas that you want to paste into your Microsoft file. Highlight, hit Control C or you know copy. Yeah, just collapse it down. Don't remember, don't close it. Just collapse it down. Go to Edit, Paste Special. Remember that Paste Special, not Paste. Now you can hit either or it says Embedded Microsoft Excel. Really? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see here. Yeah, I got the crappy version. I'll say that's one. Oh, that's probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's definitely part of it. Bingo. I pay special, right? Yeah. Did you, uh, did you uh, copy an Excel file? Yeah. Or else I wouldn't be able to go to the next one. special. No, you can do it. No, you can still go. You want to make sure. What's your Excel file? Excel like 2003 or higher, it'll do it. And if it's lower, it, it, it might do it, but sometimes you know, lower version is great for you. Probably go to the next one. You get the latest uh, version here then. The latest seven. Well, from all my figures? Yeah. Do you know, all these commands show up on that version? Well, the next question is really down there. So, V8, it, it, it's actually, there's a lot more, a lot more newer commands than uh, the V8. I think because I, I was going, I was doing this the other day. I figured, you know what? Why, why not? Might as well not do it for a class because some people will use it more than others. You know, as far as you want to bring in a quantity box, bill of materials, just show up on your drawing instead of having a separate piece of paper on a report. Makes sense, you know. Um. Let me close that. Yeah. Okay. Any qu any other questions about that or? All right. Well, um. There's. Let's see. I want to talk about referencing. Um. You know what? Let me show you that now because it's. it's since we're already on the re portion of referencing an image, I want to show you how to reference another CAD file to your CAD file. Let's say you're working on a CAD file, he needs to reference your file into his. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So you, if you want to copy a detail so you don't have to redraw it or email it or whatever. Um, oh, some of this file right now. Where's my phone? Uh, 
rollers. I got going here. Now here's a junk file that I made. Well, not the beginning, but okay. Let's say I want to reference. This is someone drew a detail, and I want to reference there's any because I want to use it. I have the similar detail that I want to use, or on there's information there that I want to use. Instead of typing it, reinventing the whole wheel, if you go on the file, same place where your raster manager is, but right above it, it says references. So if you go to file, references, you get your reference box that comes up. And pretty much the same thing, you can go to tools, attach, or this little icon right here, you just say attach reference. And you want to bring in another CAD file. As long as you know what CAD file you want to bring in, it's pretty simple. Um, Let's say I want to bring in this tower. It's, uh, it's one of the towers I was using for one of the drawings. You click on that DGN file, the Microsoft file. Right here, right on the, where it, says, when it shows you the preview of the file, if you hit where it says attachment method, if you click on that, there's two things that's going to happen. Well, only two things you have to click on, actually. Interactively, and I mean, I'm sorry, interactive is fine if you just have a basic detail, tower, uh, bearing, so any basic detail. Because you're going to tell it where to go. Coincident world. Only use coincident world if you're working on plan, wetland, to topo file, anything that's in a coordinate system. If you're coincident world, hit open, it automatically take that file, pop it into my station in the exact coordinate system, real world coordinates. If you do that with a detail, it doesn't, it's not going to make a difference. Because detail is just the detail that you're drawing. But if you're bringing it in, like let's say you you um let's say you're working on a plan file, you're working on a tuple file. I need to reference both of them in to make to create my uh, my construction plans. Well, I bring your tuple in, a coincident world, his coincident world. They'll fall right on top of each other because they'll be in the right in, in the real world coordinates. So remember, any only type, any type of plan plan work you're gonna reference and use coincident world. Details interactively because you, you'll be able to put that where you want. Um, I see. We bring this one in. That's a, that's a All right. So we got the we got this tower detail. This used to be a three D file. I converted it to a two D. So I don't know if it's gonna. I didn't. I didn't create a save view, which I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If I double click on that file, you're gonna get this uh, settings box that comes up. It's right here. It's just if I was if I created a, any type of views or save views, it'll, it'll have you know this thing here. Up. I'll have there. I'll have all my save views here. Here you can tell what scale you want to bring it in as. When you bring in anything, any any drawing, always bring in just one to one. That's what you want to make sure because then you you make it'll come in an exact scale. So if you bring in a twenty scale, it's going to come in. You know, it's not going to come in correct. Always one to one. Any references, reference one to one. Right now, this is detail scale, scale master. That's also one to one. Nothing. There's nothing much here to do. Just hit OK, and it burned in my tower. Which is here's the thing. I brought in my tower, a one-to-one -one scale. But let's say you have a certain area. You say you want. You say you have your t your border, PSG border. You want to bring in that this tower into an upper left-hand corner. So you want to control where where the tower is going to come. A lot of times, if you're working in a file, or to say uh, another engineer is working in a file, he can create a save view. He can zoom into an area of that detail. He can create a save view to say, call it tower. So when you reference it in, you can reference in that view, and you can put it wherever you want instead of looking for it. And I'll show you right now. I'll show you right now what I mean. If I go to, I'm going to this file. Okay. This is the file that I want. I want to, I want I want Bob or whatever to bring the just this just this, this detail, but I want him to be able to control where it is. I want him to see his cursor, see an outline of the box where his detail is going to be. So he can go just like this and pop where he wants. Instead of zooming out, say okay, move it. Here it is. Take it, move it. The key in command. This is where the key in command comes in. Actually, uh, very handy. If you type in SV equals, let me save you. Call it whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call this tower. Hit enter. Right now it, has, it shows me my cursor. Just left click on the screen. 
you're telling it that this view right here is going to be called tower, and that's if you want to bring in this view specifically. If you have, you can have like five, six, 10, 20 details. If you zoom in the one, and that's all you want to bring in, you just click on that file, click on that view, and you just bring in that specific detail instead of bringing in the entire file with 20 details in it. So let me do this right here. So I watch. I, I just to save you right here. It might be too close though. Let me just spread out a little bit. Let's say this is a bunch of different details. If I was to reference it in on a normal way, it'll bring it'll bring in all this stuff. You don't want to see that. You want to just focus on your tower detail. That's all you want to bring. So like I said, if you type S V equals tower or whatever you want to call it, hit your enter button. And it tells you if you ever get not too sure what your next command is, your next step, at the bottom left hand corner, it'll actually walk you through step by step what you have to do. Since you already gave it a save view, it says select your view. Left click on it. So now we'll go into, where is it? My junk file here. And I'm, I'm going to show you what's going what's to happen. I'm going to show you both scenarios. Let's say. Get rid of that. There's reference, isn't it? Come on. All right, I'm show you both scenarios here. If I go to my uh, my reference box, go to File References. Here's your box here. You go to Attach. And the file that I was working in was this Tower 542D. Is interactive. You can double click on the file. Now you see where see where the save views. You had the little plus symbol there. If you click on that symbol, you see the view that you just created in that drawing. So you click on that. Everything set one to one. Click OK. This little box is where my view is. So you know more or less where it's going to be. That's all you brought in. You tell it where to go. You tell you t you you're pretty much you're controlling that view. If I didn't have a save view and I want to bring it in again, if I didn't click on the save view and I want to bring it in, it brings in everything. You see what I mean? This is the one when I when I when I create the save view, I selected that view name and it brings in just that view. If I did the same procedure but I didn't have a save view, it'll bring in every little detail you have drawn to mankind and not drawing. So this is part just this just, just like focuses on one certain detail. So you don't have to put a fan, you don't have to clip, you don't have to do all this extra stuff when you can avoid it just by giving the view. And that's usually where the key in command comes in very good because you, you know, you can have like I said, twenty details. You want to bring a certain detail in at a certain scale. Well you, you could you give that detail, you zoom in, call it you give it whatever save view name. So when you bring it in to say quarter inch scale, you bring in just that view. That detail, the, for, no, the view you created for that specific detail, instead of bringing in the entire drawing. That just makes it easier to work with, you know. And actually, if I have one here, this might be a good example. Oh, no. There's one in here I want to show you, which is actually pretty good. Crossing section. Here's for example. Uh, come on. There you go. This is the one I did the other day. We have plan and profile, and we get tower details, and we got a key plan. Obviously, you know, key plan is not gonna be just not the scale. You just want to share, you know, the view of more or less the location of your work your your working area. These guys, the plan, the profile, and the towers are all drawn in different model spaces. Just like AutoCAD, you can create as many model spaces as you want depending on the scale. Like for this one, this is done at a 200 scale. Your uh, my, my plan view profile, same thing. Horizontal, 200, vertical, vertical, 40 scale. These details are done at a 40 scale. So just like AutoCAD, if you're creating a um, a plan view at a 200 scale, you go to File Models. I got one, two, three, four, four different models for all those details. So if I double click on it, it was always up my plan my plan model which is I have it set up for 200 scale. Draw all your stuff in there, you're good, you're good to go. You can put SV equals plan, save you as a plan. The tower, 
Um, I have it done on the 40 scale. You know, give SV equals tower. Now, when you go back into your regular, your home view, which has your border, you won't be able to reference that stuff in. You reference it in at that scale. You reference it. If it's 200, you reference that in at a 200 scale. If it's 40, you represent it at a 40 scale. That's where this save view comes in handy because you can just give, you can select that specific view for that specific detail. If not, it's going to bring, like I said, it's going to bring in everything. But if, like I said, if you wanted to create these model spaces, all you pretty much do is just hit create a new model space. You go to file, models. Everything you need is file, it's either file, reference, file, raster image, raster manager, I'm sorry, or file, models. Models works very good for stuff like this, for if you have a lot of details, but then they're obviously they're going to have to be brought in at different scales. Where you can create a model, uh, as many models as you want per that scale. Let's say you want to create a model. I want to create a new model. Go here, go to create. Pretty much set the you know design to the just give it a, give the file whatever name you want to give it. Let's say sometimes you got to mess with the, the the scale because if it's a really small detail. The scale could be, you can make the scale a little bigger. You can adjust the scale as you're working on it. But let's say you, you're creating a model. Uh, let's say you want to be a 316 scale. That's just making the scale of your model, and that's the same scale you're going to reference into your, your PNG border. So I can start drawing and placing, uh, well, it might be too small, but I, I just picked a random scale, but just to show you, you can start drawing. I want to bring in this this detail. I'm going to give this detail in SV equals. I don't know crap. Hit enter. <laughs> Tag your screen. So if I double click on this home this model space, which is called default, it's called default or home, which is where your PNG border is going to be your your sheet your actual layout sheet. If you go to attach and you're gonna print it, what this does is you're you're not doing external reference, you're doing self-referencing. All these stuff, all the details are done in the same file. So I can send it to I can send the file to you. I don't have to send you any external reference. I don't have to send you five or six different files. Everything's self-contained. That's why models are 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 very easy to work with because I can send to a client, I don't want to send a client 20, you know, 15, 20 files and say, oh, here's all my references. But if I have model spaces, everything's self-contained in one file. I don't have to send a, th a ton of them. So you have that Google, you have that, that Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Do you just copy that and do it the same way, paste special? Oh, the Google? No, I did, that's, um, for this one, we just do uh, the raster manager, just regular attach. So you go to file, go to raster manager, just locate your image, and just, 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 and just hit attach and just drag it in there. What do you mean for a raster image or? When you go to file and import, because I go to file and export, I export a drawing because I want to, I want to do it. I don't want to do it on the actual, actual sketch. I want to do it on my own. So what's the import one? If you go to file import. Yeah. What is that? Where are you importing that from? Well, depending, well, you import it anywhere. Yeah, you you import it from your machine. It's just pretty much the same. It's the same thing, more or less. If you have an image or a cat file, you can import it from there, but it doesn't, the problem is when you import it, it doesn't bring it in as a reference. So you're, you're, you're cut back on the options you have to modify that drawing. Okay. So that's what they always say, use raster manager because you could scale, you could rotate, you can move. You import it, it just, you know what I mean? Now, am I doing it right when I'm just exporting, when I take it, when I'm taking a file, I'm gonna work on it on my own, I'm just exporting my own file. Yeah. Or am I doing it right? I created a folder. Well, like, well, it's already been it's already been created, and you just yeah. want a copy of it. Mm -hmm. The best way is just do a file save as. Okay. Yeah, because if you export, What's the, the difference? That's my question. Yeah, the only well, it's not much of a difference. The only thing if you export, there's some some components that may not export correctly. Some things just might get out of whack, and for some reason, when I contacted Bentley about certain things like that, they they scratch their head sometimes because certain things they it's, you're like, why isn't this being brought over? Why isn't this, this command being brought over? Yeah. You know, but if you want to export, let's say you have a 3D drawing. Um, oh, excuse me. Uh, well, hey, I have a 2D drawing, but if you had a 3D drawing and you want to convert that to a 2D drawing, if you would export at the bottom, my says 3D because I'm in a 2D environment. 
but if I was in 3D environment, it'll say export 2D. You could that the, the, the when you do export the best way is, is just convert from a 3D to a 2D draw, and that's the best way to, to use an export. If you do an export, you know, put it somewhere else, you know, you're gonna have to check, make sure that nothing got out of whack. So to kind of avoid that, you go file, save as, just put it where you want to go. Because right then and there, it's already saving everything. It's bringing in everything over. You don't have to worry about double checking. It pretty much, it just, less stress. <laughs> Yeah, if you export it, no, it'll, it'll, you, it'll do the same. It'll do the same thing. If you take his file and save as, it's now it's just a copy of file. It's it's in your hands. Okay. If he was to, if you open it, if he's in it, obviously it'll say read only. Right. The only thing you could do if he was in it and you open up is you. The only thing it lets you do is measure. You can't copy it because it'll give you an error at the bottom. There is a way like. Um, Probably hearing out the word too much, but the other company I work for, we have one guy. He was an um, electrical engineer. He'll go in and start changing everything. He won't tell us. Yeah. And once we go in, we're like, "What the heck just happened?" Yeah, <laughs> There's a way um, you can lock. <laughs> See, oh, you're the guy. Okay. There's a way you can lock uh, lock the model so they can't get in. Either password protected or just lock a certain model. But they did that to him. So every time he was going into the file, he he was trying to make changes and it wasn't happening. But my boss, don't tell him, don't tell him. Because <laughs> he, he never got the message, that don't do that. <laughs> yeah, but if you do like file save as, you don't have to worry about things getting out of whack. It's just, just copying the file. Export, oh, there's always something, you may not say it right off the front, right or off the bat, but it's usually it's something that gets out of whack when you do an export. Save as, just save as, boom, you're done. They kept the export in there because when you're doing from a 3D to a 2D drawing, you can convert, and they just call it exporting from one to the next. But every time you do anything, import any drawing or export, you always have to go through and almost like with a fine tooth comb, check every nook and cranny because there might be a setting that could, be, that could affect you down the line, you know, when you do any why, type of. Why would that happen? I wish I knew. It's just, don't if the funny thing is, when you're exporting, it's like if I'm going to take, um, if I'm converting from like MicroStation AutoCAD, there's always some stuff that's going to get out of whack. You have to check to make sure your settings are correct. Everything was converted correctly. You're doing exports, it's, it's the same thing. You might have little small settings that you won't even notice, but it could affect another drawing. It could possibly have, um, have a neg negative impact on you creating a PDF or just printing these guys out or just be able to, to work with them. There's, there's always something weird when you export. Now, that's not the case all the time, but there has been a few cases that if you export or import, you're not getting the 100% information that you need. You know, something gets left behind or something didn't import correctly or didn't, or didn't export correctly. And like I said, that's not always the case, but to prevent that, file save as, boom, you're done. But the only time I use export is when I'm exporting from a three-dimensional to a two-dimensional drawing. Because, you know, like I said, you know, you know te technology works when it wants to, <laughs> you know? Any questions? I think that's um I think that's pretty much it. I mean as long as if you guys don't have any questions, I think we're pretty much uh, good for today. Um if you guys are here next week we we'll get more in depth on um um <coughs> warping an image. Um how to bring it in and make it into an act to fit your, your border. You see, you have a this PGD border, I bring the image, you know, the image will come out, it could be a rectangular image. If you want to warp it to make the exact shape of your border, you can do that. I can show you that, and I'll start showing us um, level management, how to create things on certain specific levels. So if you're drawing a plan or detail, and say, I, I like the detail, but can you shut this off? I don't want to see this portion, but you don't want you don't you don't want to delete it. You can put it on a certain level, just on off. That's it. Because when it comes to CAD, you never want to delete nothing. <laughs> The best thing to do is put it on the construction level or just move it way out in outer space. Because there's a lot of times they say, oh, you know what, we made a mistake. Can you bring that back? Well, you don't want to go back to the backup server and just to bring a drawing back if you just save it or just put it on a, a level and just have the display turned off.
Questions, comments, uh, job busting? I don't care. <laughs> What's that thing about, about locking into somebody else's hand? Oh, um, there's a, um, this, this command, you could, you could type in a key and you could lock a model space that they can't do any physical drawing. There's another one that you actually have, it's like password protected, but that's a pain. <laughs> There's, if in the key, if you type in model lock and tag it on the screen, it'll actually lock that model. So if, you, if I try to go in your model space, I can't draw anything until I unlock it. Yeah. Yeah, like right here, this right here, this is a model, but this is they call default or home. This is where you have your sheet, your, your, your PCG border. This is what you're going to be printing from. These other guys, these are specific models for details. I, they're all different scales. The whole reason I'm having modeling is so if you have multiple scales, you could draw it in its own environment and then reference that into your, your sheet, your title block at that scale. Because right now, this planet profile, they're, done a, they're drawing a 200 scale drawing. My towers are drawing on a 40 scale. So when I go into my home view or default where my, where my border is, I reference those at the scale they're, they're, they're drawn at. Which the scale of drawing it all depends how you know how how good it looks. You want, you, you want to bring it in, but you don't want to bring it in too big. You don't want to bring it in too small. You got to mess with the scale. <coughs> That's when mouse come in handy because everything's self-contained. It's self-referenced. You know, I don't have to do it in another file. I'll say, hey, here's my file. Oh, but here's all these reference files along with it. The only time you got to do that is when you have like plan views, topo right away grading plans, anything that's in the corner system, that has to be in a separate file all on its own. So if I send you a file, I might have to send you that along with it. But if it's details like this, you can do self-reference.